With the lowest point a thousand meters above sea level, we are in the kingdom in disguise. That is the beautiful country of Lesotho. Now, what we know is that the founder of the Basotho, that is King Mushweshe, was a man who loved to unite people. Now, Africans are here gathered in the very same spirit of Ubuntu, and we'll be taking you through that adventure. So, Jumbo, Dumela, and Saubona, I am Dumelo Mutudwane, and this is Hashtag Africa. <music> The annual Mushwesha walk retraces the path which the king of the Basotho Mushwesha took when he led his people back to safety in the 19th century. Now this event was launched back in 2007 and it has attracted the interest of the public from you know the greater African continent but also the Celtic region. The Mushwesha walk is built as Lesotho's greatest adventure. Started in 2007 with just 50 people, since then it has been seeing participation rise to more than 750 from Basotho in Lesotho as well as from other Africans. The walk is approximately 116 kilometers split between three days, starting at Mokwaneng in the Liribe district, ending at Tababusiu Cultural Village in the Maseru district. Along the way, speeches are given at various historical sites passed by Mushweshwe and his people with hopes to pass the history of the Basotho nation on not only to generations to come, but also to those from other cultures and countries. To tell me more about this, I'm joined by Tabo Maritlani. Tabo, thank you so much for your time. I mean, I just gave a bit of a summary of what this walk is all about, but give us that summary of the history behind this walk. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, uh, Kim Mushash was born in 1786 at Mianpanin, and he went to initiation school at Mianpanin in 1805. 1810, he got married. In our culture, when you get married, they always take you away from your parents. Then you go to a place where you'll stay with your wife, then he went to Botabota, that's where he settled with his people. Yes, there was a war that he fought with Kid Mantatis of Batoka when he was there. So then he, he didn't realize that that place is not safe enough, so they decided to say, okay, fine, let's look for a better place to settle. So that's when they come the south of Lesotho, his brother Mutingwe and Muhali, they came to the site. So then when they arrived here, they saw that mountain, flat mountain, which is called Tababusi, where the mountain, the chief of that place was Mahobad. So basically, what and he said, okay, the Kim Shosha is looking for a better place to settle. So they said to him, no, you can settle here. So then the warriors went back and said, okay, the place is safe enough. That's when they started to trek here in 1824. Yeah. But you decided 14 years ago to have this annual walk. I mean, how has it been received by everyone that's in attendance today and for the past 14 years? Yes, we started with 40 people. Then from there, we never looked back. It was tough, lots of work had to be done. But yeah, this year we got a good sponsorship that we got from uh, Mantis Kluho and Mantis Kluho projects and construction. So what happened is this, and the other uh, company came in, uh, Ramil and Associates, which they said, okay, fine, let's put hands together. There are Basotho people who are staying in South Africa. So they said, no, this is our thing. So let's put more money to see this event works. Yeah. How was it this year around? Because I'm seeing everybody here getting their lunch, but there's still a lot more walking still to happen. How's it been so far? So far, hey, it was tough. From day one, it was raining. We were doing 31 case the first day. Second day, we were doing 54 case. We started early in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. Then we push it till 10 o'clock at night. So you can imagine if it's raining, then it's dark and it's slippery. So it, it was tough. But yeah, we made it. Then this morning, we started at uh, around 8 o'clock yeah. from Madimung. Madimung, that's where the caves of the cannibals are. Because we had caves, uh, we have cannibals before, but because of Kim Mushashwa the first, there are no more cannibals in the yeah. city. I think what you're trying to say is that you need a shoe sponsor now, because maybe your feet hurt, because you've been walking for so long. How are your feet feeling so far? They are, they are bad, eh? But mm. what is important is for my feet to walk. This year we made sure that we give away a thousand shoes to the schools, about five schools. Every school we have given them two, 200, 200 shoes. Yeah. And the other important thing is this, there is a crash that we have built with Mantis and construction and projects mm. and we build with uh, Ramil and Associates. They build a nice uh, preschool there. 
it's got a cash chain, it's got everything. You can imagine for those kids yeah. when they wake up and say, hey, this is our school. Right. And last year when he passed there, the, it was dilapidated and the roof was so bad, you know. Then we just, every year we need to do a social responsibility right. to help those who are need. So it's not just about the work, it's about also empowering the community. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much, Tabo Matlan. Thank you for your time. All right, then. Well, speaking of shoes, let's head now to Nigeria, where a global company known as Bata is launching in Abuja. And this, of course, is just amping up government's efforts to ensure that domestic manufacturing takes up. Bata was once a household name in Nigeria, but around 20 years ago, the global shoe manufacturer closed its factory and left. Now, Bata is back and a sign that government efforts to stimulate the domestic manufacturing sector are paying off. Bata Nigeria is a franchise of Switzerland-based Bata, which is present in 70 countries. In late 2019, Bata Nigeria opened a factory in Abuja, employing 120 people and able to produce more than 500,000 shoes annually. It has stores in the capital, as well as Lagos and Port Harcourt. Chief Executive Bertrand Dezé thinks it's time for a renaissance in Nigerian made shoes. As at the time Bata exited Nigeria, uh, the population was slightly above 60 million, and today we're 200 million plus, so um, it's glaring what the market opportunities are. Nigeria's government hopes companies like Bata will boost local manufacturing, create jobs, and reduce Africa's biggest economy reliance on oil. It's tried to stimulate this with a long running Made in Nigeria campaign which included placing import restrictions on shoes in 2007. The shift appears to be taking effect. In 2010, Nigeria imported $180 million worth of footwear. By 2018, this had fallen to $100 million. A change in attitude towards Nigerian meat products could be part of the reason. I first started without putting my label on the footwear we made because people didn't want people to know it was made in Nigeria. Tokumbo Nagarua, founder of Lagos based shoe company City Kabla, says made in Nigeria used to have a bad rep. Now people wear made in Nigeria with all pride. However, Nigerian manufacturing still faces serious disadvantages, such as frequent power outages, poor quality roads, and jam packed ports that push up the cost of raw material imports. For shoemakers, the absence of reliable supply chains of rubber can also pose a problem. One year after a storm had pummeled the southern African coast, thousands are now facing a threat of climate change. And we'll give you those details after the break.